Chicago! Happy Labor Day, everybody! I hope yours has been going well. You've been able to grill up some good food, sit back and relax. Now maybe you're you're kicking back in your easy chair, getting ready to, to just enjoy the last little bit of summer. My name is Adam Karnick. You have found your way into Shy Town Weekly. Thank you so, so very much for joining me tonight. If you're new to the show, regularly I was on Wednesday nights. Now I'm here on Mondays. I am so happy to be here. We are going to have a ton of fun. I talk all things Chicago sports, but tonight we're going to focus on the Bears. It's football season. Let's get ready. We've got a game in less than a week. We're going to talk about the Bears specifically. I've got Sean Hammond here to talk with me about them. After that, we're going to focus in a little bit more on the opponent. We're going to look at the Detroit Lions a little bit. I've got a guest lined up for that. We might get into some little bit of baseball that was going on tonight, what the Cubs have been up to this weekend, what the Sox have been doing, but mainly, let's focus on the pigskin, let's focus on football, it's fall, it's Chicago, it's football season. Man, I've been looking forward to this. Everybody ready? Let's go. Thank you again for tuning in. This is Shy Town Weekly. I am your host, Adam Karnick, here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Let's get a little bit of housekeeping out of the way real quickly. You can follow along with all of our shows on Twitter at IE Sports. Then also you can follow this show show directly at Chi Town Weekly I E S R when weekly is abbreviated W K L Y and if you want to follow me personally I am at Twitter at Adam underscore Karnick. And if you are listening to this show live and all the shows are available of course live but also as podcasts after the fact, if you're listening live on the Spreaker app Go ahead and log in, hop into the chat. I can see you there. We can talk back and forth. Larry and Taryn are already in. Hey guys, how you doing? We can talk back and forth and you can interact with the show that way as well. All right, so we want to talk Bears football first. And to help me do that tonight, as we've got an actual game to prepare for, I've got Sean Hammond here from Shaw Media. You can follow Sean at... Sean underscore Hammond, and Sean is S-E-A-N. Sean works on the beat covering the Bears daily for Shaw Media. Sean, thank you so much for taking time out of your Labor Day. Happy Labor Day to you. Yeah, Adam, thank you so much as well, and, and happy Labor Day. So as we get ready for this season, of course, the big news came down Friday. Mitch won the starting job. He's going to be QB1 for at least this week. What was what was more surprising to you, first of all, that, that Mitch won or that they waited until Friday night of Labor Day weekend to announce it to everybody? Yeah, Adam. I mean, personally, I'm not super surprised that Trubisky won the job. Um, I do think that maybe they didn't have to wait quite so long. I don't, I don't know why that was necessary when, uh, you know, there's a, there's a part of me that thinks they kind of knew this is the way it's going all along. I mean, this is the guy they've invested so much in over the last few years, and and why not give him one more chance in, in his the final year of his contract to go out there and improve himself uh, one more time? And I think, I think from that perspective, I think they made the right decision here between Trubisky and Foles. Foles was coming in new, and uh, while you know he know, he's familiar with the type of offense the Bears run, he still didn't have a full off season. There were no OTAs, which is a time when he would really get uh, acclimated with his receivers. and And I thought there were times when he just 
uh, you know, he during training camp, he didn't look uh, all that impressive. Uh, not that he did anything wrong. He was just maybe not testing it as much as Trubisky, and I think that's something that the coaches wanted to see. Really? So... So you would frame this as more Trubisky won the competition more than, say, Foles lost it. I would say that, but I would also say that, uh, you know, neither of them is coming out here and looking like Drew Brees, you know? Um, Yes, I think Trubisky did come out and win the job, and I think he did that both on the field and off the field, just his demeanor and the way he was organizing workouts in the off season, you know, outside of the facility with Anthony Miller and some other guys. And, um, he came in and the, you know, the big knock on Trubisky has been, Oh, he doesn't, you know, he doesn't just throw the ball downfield. He's at least last year, he, there wasn't a lot of downfield throws and he's checking down way too often and just making these short little passes that aren't really accomplishing much. And, we saw in training camp uh, Trubisky that was at least testing it downfield, you know, and now there were some times where that caused a little trouble, and, you know, he, he had a couple of interceptions uh, a couple, last week in their, their uh, they did a dress rehearsal at Soldier Field, but I think it, he did enough to, to win the job and, and to show his coaches that he's, he knows what he needs to work on, and he's actively doing that. Well, that that makes me feel a little bit better about the decision. Then, okay, that that helps put my mind at ease a little bit. Then, as far as Trubisky is concerned, because I yeah. I'll admit I want Trubisky to to turn into the guy. So that's that's encouraging to hear that that might be happening a little bit. How about the the rest of the the rest of the fifty three man roster got set over the weekend, and the depth chart got the the first unofficial I guess is what they're they're yeah. listing it as depth chart got announced today were there any surprises on there to you I would not say there were any big surprises um, I think you can read into some things uh, just by looking at um, like at running back they have Artavis Pierce was kind of their um, their fifth guy I guess and and by putting him on the practice squad that kind of tells me that I think the Bears think David Montgomery is going to be back really quickly. He's been dealing with a little bit of a injury, but uh, you know they got four running backs counting Montgomery. That tells me he's probably going to go week one. We don't know that for sure, but that's kind of my guess. Um, they're keeping two kickers, which they've said they were going to do all along. Um, Cairo Santos is on the practice squad. Eddie Pinheiro is another guy who's been battling an injury, but he's on the active roster, so hopefully that's that means that he's going to be okay to go on Sunday. Um, Jayla Johnson, we didn't see a ton of, of the rookie cornerback, uh, in, in, in like team situations during camp. He didn't play a whole lot in the scrimmage at soldier field, but they got him listed as the first string, uh, cornerback. So I think that means he's going to be ready to go. And the coaches have been saying he's going to be ready to go. Uh, the only one that maybe was a little bit of surprise, uh, Khalil Mack's little brother was a undrafted free agent out of out of Buffalo, just like his brother um, out of Buffalo is obviously Khalil was drafted, but um, they cut him, Darius Mack. Um, you know, maybe not surprising because he's a linebacker and the Bears have a ton of good linebackers, but uh, I'm I'm curious to see what becomes of him. Yeah, I was I was disappointed to see that Ladarius. Uh, didn't make the final roster and didn't make the expanded 16 man man practice squad. I was there was a part of me that was that was very disappointed, not not surprised, but disappointed to see that he didn't didn't make it. I had these these pipe dreams of Mac and Mac coming from both sides right. and, and quarterbacks just not knowing what to do. But unfortunately, that's kind of the way I, go. I remember when the Bears signed Casey. Erlacher, Brian's little brother, and it's kind of the same thing. It was well, mm-hmm. you're we're doing a favor because your older brother's a you know phenomenal, but but you got to earn it, kind of a thing. Yeah, I I took interesting note that they listed Jalen Johnson as the starter too, because I know there was some talk with with Artie Burns going down with the ACL, and then Kevin Tolliver not necessarily stepping up the way people hoped. I know there was talk that Buster Screen 
might start on the outside and then they'd they'd figure something out. So I was surprised too to see Johnson listed as as corner one. Of the little bit that you have seen of him in practices, is he ready? I think so. I mean, he did have an interception against Folds earlier in camp, and uh, he says he's fully healthy. I think they, they did a lot of. They were very cautious this training camp of not wanting to to injure some of their guys going up against you know their own teammates. Um, there were they frequently gave some of these veterans days off just just because. Um, so I think there was just a little bit of cautiousness with, with Jalen Johnson. I will say this, too. I think we will see a lot of Buster Screen, and I think we will see a lot of Deion Bush, too, uh, at safety. Those guys are going to be worked in there, you know, here and there when, when some of those other guys need a rest. And um, I, I will be curious to see how much Johnson is, is playing on Sunday. Yeah, and let's face it, on defense – you spend so much time in the nickel or the dime or other sub packages that basically if you're if you're dressed you got to be you got to be ready to get out there chances are your number is going to get called at some point yeah we'll we'll see a lot of especially in that secondary uh we'll see a lot of those guys coming in and out i think yeah all right on to the other side of the ball then for a minute we talked about the quarterback situation montgomery's hurt for and he might play week one. He might he might not. That's encouraging to you know. I I read that too a little bit when they when they did what they did with the roster. It was oh maybe they they seem confident that Montgomery might play week one. When looking at the rest of this offense, outside a quarterback, who needs to step up? Who needs to who who needs to be more consistent and just be better for this offense to click? Yeah, a, a couple of things come to mind, and, and I think the biggest one is the offensive line. They, the offensive line wasn't wasn't very good last year, and there were stretches when when they really struggled. Um, I think a lot of a, a lot of the struggles they had last year running the ball have to come back to the line. Uh, there were so many times when when David Montgomery was, you know, he was getting a hit uh, as soon as he had the ball. It seemed like um, now they have. Four of their five start well. Well, they bring back everybody who was starting uh, after Kyle Long got hurt last year. Um, so it's the same cast of guys. So how how does having Juan Castillo a new offensive line coach? How does that affect these guys? Um, they have a whole new you know whole new slew of offensive coaches. How can they get the most out of this group? Um, you slide Jermaine Effetti in there at right guard. He's He's uh, the newest member of the starting lineup on the on the line, coming from Seattle. Um, what? How do these guys gel? Because you can love David Montgomery all you want as a running back, but if he's he's not getting any space, then it's really not going to help you uh, uh, run the ball. And and another thing about Trubisky too is uh, Matt Nagy talked. Uh, the other day about how he just liked Trubisky's pocket presence more this training camp and, and the fact that he wasn't scrambling when he didn't have to. And you can read into that as, okay, Trubisky is, is doing well in the pocket and, and not running as soon as somebody comes near him. But you could also read into that as, well, maybe the offensive line is giving him a little more time to do that. Uh, so I think the line is a big thing. And I think, too, there's really – you know, they, their tight end position was not good last year, and they need to see something out of that. Uh, Jimmy Graham and Cole Komet are two guys that the, the Bears love. We'll see how that translate to, translates onto the field once once the game starts. I think they really could use that, especially in the red zone. Uh, a couple of big tight ends, a couple of big targets for, for their quarterback. Yeah, I know the I know the Bears were very quick and keen to put highlight reels out on their website and through their social sites of basically any time Jimmy Graham caught a pass, it was, oh, look at this, Jimmy Graham caught the ball. Oh, right. don't check it out. So, well, we'll see. So, all right, now zeroing in on to Detroit specifically, week one, opening up in Detroit, first time since since 1982. What do they need to do to beat Detroit this week? Yeah, I think it really comes down to what this reworked offense for the Bears is going to look like here. Are they going to be able to run the ball more effectively? And, uh, you know, what, you know, you do have, while Matt Nagy is an offensive guy and he's a quarterback guy, you, 
he got a whole new offensive staff uh, behind him. And, and what wrinkles do they bring? Because I think this Bears defense uh, is going to be at a similar level to what we've seen last year. You know, maybe they're not the 2018 Bears defense, but I still think they're going to be pretty darn good. Um, so from that perspective, uh, you know, I think I think they will they will have a good game defensively. I, I am curious. I mean, last year, um, gosh, there was a when the Lions came to Soldier Field, it was both backups were playing. It was it was just an ugly game, and and uh, you know, I think the Bears defense loved that. But uh, I'm curious to see how they do when you got a real quarterback in there who's who's going to make life difficult for you. But at the same time, I think it really comes down to what is this Bears offense going to look like because. We've seen it in camp, but but it's, it's one thing to see it in camp, and it's another thing to see it in the game. And, and we'll see if all this this work that they've done in the offseason really really translates onto the field. Yeah. All right. Um, and then for for you personally, with the COVID situation, how are they handling the press? Are you going to get to be able to go out to, to Ford Field to the road games and see? Are they pretty – are they pretty tight on who they're letting in and out right now? We, I, I am not going to be in Detroit this weekend. Um, we are being pretty conservative with our travel at this point just because of COVID and everything. Um, I will say when uh, – I'm curious to see. We don't really know what Soldier Field is going to be like um, because – uh, it just seemed like the Bears didn't didn't really have the plan set yet uh, as of as of last week and – um, when we went there for the the dress rehearsal a week or so, a little bit over a week, we were sitting out in the stands, not in the press box. Um, I know one of the issues with that was, while well, we can do that when the weather's nice, the issue is <laughs> is getting outlets out there for all these reporters. It's one thing to do that. The Bears are very secretive about. We're not allowed to tweet during the two hour practice window. We can only tweet afterwards and. and there's only a certain amount of time you're allowed to take videos and photos. So, so it wasn't a problem during a practice. Like we didn't need outlets, but in a game, you're going to need outlets, you know, we're going to be tweeting the whole game long, right. And and (laughs) writing stuff and putting, putting updates. So I, I think we'll be in the press box spread out. Uh, but I, I, we don't know that for sure yet. (laughs) Well, and, and, you know, it's Chicago. The weather will turn bad possibly here in 10 yes. days. So who knows? Yeah. So, well, Sean, thank you so much for, for hopping on and, and talking Bears with me tonight, especially on, on, a, on a holiday. I know for, for media there's really no such thing as holidays, but thank <laughs> you anyway for, for hopping on and talking some Bears with me. Oh, yeah, of course, Adam. I really appreciate, uh, appreciate you having me on. Absolutely. All right, we will we'll catch you later, Sean. Okay, thank you. Yep. All right, that was Sean Hammond again of Shaw Media. You can follow him at Sean underscore Hammond. S E A N is how he spells his first name. All right. So we got a great preview of the Bears there. Let's now take a look at the other side. Let's get a little bit closer of a look at the Detroit Lions. This is Chi-Town Weekly here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. From the home plate to the nets, the end zone to the finish line. Here nothing is off limits and no sport is safe. Not what it seems with your host, Caitlin Seam, bringing you sports like you've never heard before. Catch me Thursdays at 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific, right here on IA Sports Radio. The only question is, are you ready?
Soccer Scoreboard Show with your host, Gabriel Montoya. This is the show for soccer, football, football fans, or whatever you call the beautiful game. Every week, I tackle the latest and greatest news from around the soccer world. From the English Premier League, to the World Cup, to MLS, Liga, MX, and more. You can listen to the Soccer Scoreboard Show and our lineup of fantastic guests every Friday at noon here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Hi everybody, it's Calvin here from USRN here to give you an important message. Since 2017, we have done our absolute best to provide you with nothing but the highest quality of sports calls in the greatest of quantity possible. Thanks to you, our station has grown more than we ever thought. That's why, with your help, we would like to grow even further. Just think, twice the amount of your favorite calls, 24 hours of coverage, talk shows, play-by-play, game-by-game analysis, and so much more. That's right, USRN2 is officially in development. But we can't do it alone. We have set up a GoFundMe page that you can access from our homepage on the left of your screen. We also are planning special giveaways and prizes to our highest owners. Our goal here at USRN is to bring you the best calls possible at no cost to you. In order to continue to do that, we need your help now. Please check out our GoFundMe page, and if you would like to know how you can help, you can email usrnradio at gmail.com. Without your support, we couldn't do what we do. Football fans, this is me, your boy Larry, be inviting you to join myself, Callum Reynolds, Mike Pat, and John Felipe for one of the most electrifying football shows you have ever heard. Three and out, right here at IE Sports Radio. Recap of the week before, a preview of what's to come, and of course, three hardcore head to head prom time face offs each week. You don't want to miss it. And welcome back into Chi Town Weekly here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Once again, I am your host, Adam Karnick. Thank you again so much for joining us here on Labor Day. Thank you to everybody checking in on the chat line. I see Pierre jumped in. Hey, Pierre, thank you for, for spending some time here. So, football, we call audibles a lot, right? Well, I, I had to call one. Originally, 
Next to talk Lions with us, I was going to have A.W., the host of the new Mitten Sports show here on IE Sports, jump in and talk Lions. He texted me and told me, well, I'm a little under the weather. I'm not feeling good. Fortunately, I have friends that are willing to answer the phone at the drop of a hat and and jump in and help me out. So helping us out instead is my friend Matt Sisson. He's going to talk some lions with us. Matt is a a very analytical kind of guy. You might hear that a little bit. Matt, thank you so much for hopping on to talk some lions with us tonight. Hey, Adam. Pleased to be here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So as we if we get ready, Bears Lions Week One. What can we expect from the Lions? I just I just spent all last segment kind of talking about the Bears coming out of their off season. What's new with the Lions? What's different? Why is there so much optimism surrounding the Lions right now? Well, the optimism comes from two places for the Lions. I think one is is from themselves, what they've done for themselves, and one is just the product of their environment. You know, the NFC North is very much in flux. All the teams seem to be in the process of a bit of a change, so, you know, any of them can rise to the top. And for the Lions, they make their case by having a really strong offense, if if flawed. Uh, flawed because their offensive line is kind of the Achilles heel of that. But a lot of the pieces on the offense, I think, bring cause for optimism for people. And one of the, a couple of the newest pieces are both in the backfield. Of course, the, the rookie running back, DeAndre Swift, and then over the weekend, they sign Adrian Peterson. Are we going right. to actually see the Lions run the football this year? I think they're going to try, certainly. <laughs> um, I think they got... You know, Adrian Peterson, of course, speaks for himself. DeAndre Swift, very highly touted prospect uh, out of college. And Carrion Johnson, who showed himself to be competent, if injury prone. Um, and I think their success or failure hinges on their offensive line's ability to make that room for them, which is the real question mark uh, in my mind. Yeah, and with Adrian Peterson, it was interesting when I saw it, one of the thoughts that came to mind is Adrian Peterson isn't a special teams player. Never was, never will be. Is he going to is he going to be an active contributor or is he going to be more of a guy that just kind of takes carries away from Johnson and Swift? Um, well, I, certainly you wouldn't bring on Adrian Peterson if you weren't playing on giving him the ball. Um, I think it absolutely will be at least to start a running back by committee seems to be the term people are using at least until they find out maybe who, who fits the best, you know? Um, All right. Last year for the lions, Matthew Stafford was white hot through the first nine or so weeks of the season. Then he injures his back and he's completely done is is he going to pick up where he left off or is there going to be some residual there and do the lions basically go as far as he can carry them uh even when stafford was injured last year their backup quarterbacks were able to bring them and they tried a couple um david blow i remember was one um can't remember the name of the other fellow but, you know, they kept them in games, actually. Um, they just never really won many of them, uh, as their final record suggests. So it's not all Stafford, but, yeah, I do think that their their success does mostly hinge on Stafford staying healthy. And as far as I know, he should be 100%. Okay. So the Lions, they last made the playoffs in 2016 – they haven't won the division in almost 30 years. What, yeah. what is it going to take? What, what do they think is going to be different for this year? The defense especially was such a weak point for them a year ago. Have they improved that defense? You know, they, they have added some pieces. Um, 
Jamie Collins Sr. Uh, and linebacker is a big one. Deshaun Hand was very good 2018. He was injured most of last year. If he can stay healthy, that will help. But, yeah, the front seven is is still going to be their weakness on a generally weak defense. Um, Trey Flowers is strong. Deshaun Hand, if he's healthy, he will be strong. Um, as I said, Jamie Collins Sr. will be strong. Um, but the line, linebackers in particular, aside from Jamie, are weak. You have Jared Davis and you have Christian Jones, who both rated out to be some of the worst players in their position last year. Jared Davis is particularly painful because he was a first-round pick for the Lions back in 2017, perhaps it was. Yeah, I know they've had some some bad luck with some first-round picks, kind of like the Bears that way, too. All right, so the Bears announced over the weekend that Trubisky is going to be the starter. You are Matt Patricia. Are you worried, or are you jumping for joy? <laughs> you know, between the two, I guess I'm not, I'm not sure uh, between Trubisky and Nick Foles, that is. I'm not sure the happier to see on the field because if I'm Matt Patricia, I'm less worried about which one of those two it is and more about am I going to be able to get to the quarterback because as a, the front seven being a weakness for the Lions, it it had one of the worst pressure rates on the quarterback last year, 27th, I believe. And it's going to be a question of can they improve that. I think the Lions will see much more success if they are able to put pressure on Trubisky. Um, the Lions' defense, as far as the secondary, is actually okay, if not great. You know, you have newly drafted rookie uh, Jeff Okuda. Uh, you have Tracy Walker, who is a solid safety. Desmond Trufant will be the new filling in for Darius Slay. Um, and uh, Deron Harmon over from uh, the Saints, I believe. But uh, at any rate, as the other safety. Of the defense, the secondary is a strength for the Lions. So how do you see this game in particular going down? What are the Lions going to try to do to attack the Bears' defense? And conversely, how are they going to try to generate pressure and disrupt Trubisky in the offense? Um, As far as Lions seeing success on offense, it's all going to be about trying to protect Stafford. They have... Frank Ragnow at center, and they have Taylor Decker at left tackle. They are two very good players. It's the other three that are the problem. Uh, they are they kind of are okay, um, perhaps at best. So I think if they can protect Stafford from a strong uh, Bears pass rush, they will see success on offense. And conversely, uh, on defense, if they're just able to send some rushers and pressure Trubisky uh, so that they can trust their secondary to keep on their guys. Uh, I think they'll see success there, but that's, that's the trouble with Patricia is that last year, even when he couldn't get to the quarterback, he never sent more help. He was very, very rigid. He does not like to adapt. And so I think that's something other teams can abuse as far as his tendencies. So once you find something that works, Patricia doesn't exactly change up what he's doing so that you can't do that anymore. Right. He's got his he's got his regimen and he's gonna carry it out regardless of A what the other team is doing or B what his own personnel's strengths are. So for the Lions, only nine wins since Patricia has taken over. Obviously, this is a this has got to be a make or break year for him. There's an extra playoff spot this year in the NFC. We we were talking during the commercial break about how topsy turvy the NFC North is going to be this year. Do you do you think the Lions? Do you think a Patricia is going to keep his job after this season and b? Are they making the playoffs? Um, well, I think the answer to the second one determines the answer to the first one. I think, in my personal estimation, I think it's playoffs or bust 
for not only Patricia, but Bob Quinn. I think if they don't make the playoffs, I think both of them are going to be shown the door. Um, you know, I can't say I'm totally certain about that, but if somebody pinned me down and forced me to guess, that's my guess. Are they going to get there? You know, when you look around, there's a gigantic mixed bag of both optimism and pessimism for the Lions. I think that arises from they're they're very they're strong. They're uh, it's a very dichotomous team. Their strengths on offense are pretty strong, and their their weakness on defense is, is conversely very weak. It just it depends on how the games go and which one of those things is going to dictate the game flow. I think they could, but obviously far from a guarantee that they make it to the playoffs. All right, and then dial in on this week specifically. How do you see this game right here, week one, going down? I think the Lions got it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to agree with Vegas on this one. I think their, their, their offense is going to carry their defense to victory on this one. The, the home field advantage plays out. How going to be close or going to be a blowout? I think it'll be close. The Lions always got to keep their fans on the edge of their seat without fail. <laughs> All right. Well, Matt, thank you so much for jumping on here for a, for a little bit, especially on on crazy short notice. I really, really appreciate that. Thank you for spending a little bit of your Labor Day with me and with us and giving us a look at the other side for this week's game. Absolutely. Glad to do it. Thanks a lot. All right. Talk to you later. Mm. Bye. All right, that was Matt Sisson. Again, a huge thank you for for being a pinch hitter here for me for me tonight. All right, so we have we've looked at the an in-depth look at the Bears, an in-depth look at the Lions. I want to give you a couple of my takes before we get out of here and some other news from across town. This is Chi Town Weekly. My name is Adam Karnick. You are on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. What's up, everybody? This is Taryn Rodriguez. Are you a fan of volleyball? Are you a fan of Thunder Spikes? Then I have the show for you. Set Point, where I cover NCAA men's and women's volleyball, high school boys and girls volleyball, beach volleyball, and even professional volleyball. Catch the action every week here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. guys, it's Blake Henley, better known as H-Town Blake to some of you. Happy to announce that Faces Loader is back in full force. We'll be bringing that high heat every Tuesday night here on IE Sports Radio. So come home, get ready, dig into that batter's box, and see if you can chase that high heat, baby. So we'll be coming to you live with all the stats, all the rundowns, all the division rivalries, and every team that's going to make the playoff push to get to that one and only October and get to the pinnacle of what baseball is to hoist that commissioner's trophy when it's all said and done. If you like c- c- comedy, c- c- comedy, then you like the Wait a Minute Show. If you like a different opinion coming from a different angle, then you like the Wait a Minute Show. So join me Saturday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with your host, Jelani, J.B. Bodie, and of course, my man Lopan on the Wait a Minute Show. 
Take that right, low band. Hey, USRN fans, do you have a product or company you're trying to promote? Look no further. USRN is teaming up with small local businesses trying to establish themselves via online promotion. Let us know if you're interested. Email us at usrnradio at gmail.com to learn more. football and do you want to hear a college football show dedicated to all this college football including junior college and the triple ccaa and the njcaa the naia and the ncaa including division three division two division one double a in the fcs and division one single a in the fbs well then look no further join myself larry b and my colleagues, Mr. H-Town Blake, Blake Henley, and Mr. Christian Espinoza, each week during the college football season for the latest in college football on Three and Out College Edition, right here on IE Sports Radio, your directory for all that is sports. And welcome back into Chi Town Weekly here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. I am your host, Adam Karnick. Again, if you're new to the show regularly, I was on Wednesday evening, same time, but on Wednesdays, and then some some shuffling and rescheduling. Three and out is gonna be coming back here on Wednesdays. So I got moved around, and so now I'm on Monday nights. Uh, other programming note too, three and out has been doing eight divisions in eight days, going through the entire NFL. They did all AFC last week. They started the NFC earlier today with the NFC West. For the NFC North, that episode will be coming out on Thursday, and you will hear me give a breakdown of the Bears on there, but you'll also get to hear some good in-depth thoughts on the other teams throughout the NFC North. And if you want to check out any of the prior episodes, be sure to go on to Spreaker and search for 3 and Out, or you can go to IE Sports on Twitter, at IE Sports, find any of the shows there, look them up, and look up past episodes. All right, so it was very guest-heavy during the first two segments. Again, thanks to to Sean and Matt for, for jumping on and talking about the Bears and the Lions. I wanted to give you a little bit of my thoughts as we head into Week 1 now. And Taryn in the chat, again, if you're listening live on speaker, Spreaker right now, go ahead, log on in, join, hop on in the chat. Nobody bites, I promise. Throw a question out there. I'd be happy to, to answer it, talk with you, chat back with you. Feel free to interact that way. Or if you're happy to, you know, just sitting back, keep doing that too. Taryn threw a couple of different questions out there in the chat box. One was, the Chicago Bears can make the playoffs if they blank. Immediately my thought was, if they get competent QB play all season long, whether it be Trubisky or Foles, the the name on the back of the jersey ultimately doesn't matter. This defense is ready to go. This is a top 10 premier defense in the NFL. I feel strongly enough that I think they can be top 5 in the NFL. The additions the additions that they've made with Robert Quinn, Tayshawn Gibson at safety, uh, Jalen Johnson over at corner, some moves there. I think this is a top five defense. The running game, Nagy has to commit to it. Nagy has been very hesitant to commit to a run game. Um, but if he does that this year, that's going to help. But ultimately, as it always does in the NFL, it's going to come down to quarterback play. Whether it be Trubisky or whether it be Foles, 
They can't simply be a caretaker. They've got to be able to guide the team to victory. Trubisky has never really been a worrisome guy as far as the turnovers go. He's always been cautious with the ball and to a fault. Step up, have a little bit more aggressiveness. I I read a great piece. uh, uh, I, I found a great piece this past week. Jonathan Wood did a piece on DeBear's blog talking about uh, looking at the seven game stretch that Trubisky had during 2018 when he was playing lights out football. And the a big takeaway from that was he was more aggressive. He was pushing the ball downfield a little bit more. He was he was being more assertive and being more aggressive with his play. If he can do that, if he can if he can take that step, this is a team that potentially can go a long way. And especially with an extra playoff spot to be had in the NFC this year. You know, both conferences have that extra spot, that seventh, that seventh postseason spot. I love that, by the way. I, I think that's a phenomenal spot, a phenomenal idea. It really puts an emphasis on being the, the best division winner overall, and you're gonna you're gonna see a wild card team make it to the conference championship every year too, which means you're gonna have a 50-50 shot of having a wild card team make it to the Super Bowl. So that'll be that'll be fun. But that's what they need in order to make the playoffs. They gotta have competent quarterback play. And not just, oh he was great this week and then the neck, you know, through through five touchdowns this week, and then couldn't hit the broadside of a barn next week, and just couldn't understand what the defense was doing in front of him the following week. The other question Taron threw out there, he wanted to know: Should the Bears have gone after Josh Rosen? No, <laughs> for for a few reasons. One, this late into the off season and into, you know, effectively now you're in the regular season, it would have taken Rosen too long to get up to speed, to get caught up with the offense, with his teammates, with his with with the situation around him. And he's not in an automatic obvious upgrade over what they had. Rosen's been bounced around he's now with the he's now with the bucks you know didn't even leave the state of florida i can't think off the top of my head of a quarterback who's had a faster fall from grace i mean maybe maybe jamarcus webb or ryan leaf some of the all-time Raiders guys. I'm sure Larry's ears just started burning when I when I mentioned those two names. Um, and for the Bears, probably the closest you can come up with is Cade McNown. But even McNown at least lasted for two seasons with the Bears before they shipped him off to Miami. Rosen lasted one year in Arizona before they were, yep, we're done. See ya, thanks. We've we've seen enough. You know, to, so to go 10 overall to you're not even on that team the following year, I can't think of a guy that's fall, a quarterback that's fallen from grace quite like that, that quickly. If, if it were June, maybe, you know, throw a flyer out there, see, see what you can get. You know, maybe you strike lightning in a bottle. NFL coaches always think that they can fix whatever is ailing a guy. They always think they can be the guy to provide the answer. But they didn't have; an, they don't have an obvious need uh, from a health standpoint. And Rosen's not an obvious upgrade over what they already have. So to to go after Rosen wouldn't have wouldn't have made sense. I've said it in the past. I'll continue to say it for the Bears. 
this this all falls on the quarterback. If they can get good, consistent play out of Trubisky for as long as they can, then great. But they've got to be willing to pull him out of there if it feels like it's not working. This defense is too good. Allen Robinson is too talented of a receiver. You may not have Allen Robinson after this season. They, they still haven't signed him to an extension, and it's sounding like at this point Robinson may not be interested in signing an extension until the season's over, that he, he doesn't want the distractions of a contract negotiation going on during the middle of a season. The Bears are set up to compete right now. This division is there for the taking right now. The, the best core, I said it last week, the best quarterback in the division, Aaron Rodgers, is on arguably the, one of the weakest rosters. I know they made the NFC Championship game a year ago. I feel as if they, they, uh, they overachieved and they didn't do a lot to improve on a roster that overachieved. The Vikings, they've got a contract deal going on with Dalvin Cook. Kirk Cousins is spotty. He's, he's not a consistent player, and the brighter the lights seem to get for Cousins, the more he seems to shrink. So you don't know if Cousins can get you there. And the Lions, there's optimism there, but can they do it? So this division is right there for the taking if the Bears can do it. If, if the Bears can go out there and be aggressive and have some success this season, it's going to be very interesting to see what they do and, and, and how they do it. All right, that was a lot of football, and we're getting close to the end of the show. There was, there were other things going on in the world of Chicago sports this past week. The Cubs had a five-game set with the Brewers. They just wrapped up the fifth game while we were on the air, a 5-1 victory for the Cubs. That <laughs> They needed that. They took, they took the, the bookends, but the middle three games were not pretty. Were, were not pretty ones for the Cubs. Uh, they now sit at 24 and 18. The Cardinals are at are at 17 and 16. And as we speak, I'm trying to to pull up the standings because I believe that throws the Cubs mathematically into second place in the division. I'm pulling it up. No, they are still. I apologize. They are still in first place uh, by two and a half games in theory. Uh, the math is of course screwy because the Cardinals have have had so many games that that they lost that they're still in the process of 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 making up and then the White Sox went into Kansas City and and got the brooms out took four games from the Royals they're sitting a half game in first place in the American League Central even in the loss column but one more win than Cleveland a game in front of in front of the Twins things are heading into the home stretch in baseball and both Chicago teams are in first place that's going to be a lot of fun to keep an eye on and and pay attention to as as we move forward so good times there i'm just excited for football season it's a football town the, the things are just always better in chicago when the bears are winning i hope they can bring they can bring a lot of joy and a lot of fun there's for for the town and for for us fans over these next few months we've had our last Sunday without football now hopefully until February you know we haven't even talked about the COVID situation and how that's going to be affected NFL players are going to get tested now every single day with the exception of game days because they don't want to run the risk of a false positive uh, preventing somebody from playing I hope that works out for them. I hope that doesn't. I hope that doesn't cause any problems and and cause any outbreaks like what have occurred in baseball. Hopefully, the NFL can avoid them. There's there's the advantage there in the fact that football is only played once a week as opposed to every single day. So hopefully, if there are uh, some positive tests, they're able to quickly isolate those players and and get their quarantines set up and be able to function 
uh, that the the week in between games is enough to allow them to to take care of of situations and then go go from there. So for this show going forward, uh, it will be for at least the the foreseeable future. It's going to be right here on Monday nights, six o'clock going forward. So there will be lots of Bears recap every. Every single game we'll be we'll be doing recap. I will definitely also be doing some quick previews heading into whatever Monday night games are are occurring. And then also a few weeks down the line will be the return of the the regular Monday night show. Let's whine about sports here on IE Sports Radio. So I'll we'll uh, we'll keep you informed on when that comes in. That's always a, a fun show to listen to. And then we'll just we'll keep pegging away on the baseball season keep up on what the Sox and the Cubs are doing uh, keep a keep an eye on what the sky might be up to in the WNBA bubble and when the uh, when the NBA decides when the next season is going to turn around and when Bulls news breaks we'll keep you up to date on that thank you guys so much for spending some time here in your Labor Day with me. It's been fun talking sports with you tonight. Huge, huge shout out to my guests tonight. Sean Hammond of Shaw Media. Thank you so much for hopping on and talking bears with us. And then pinch hitter Matt Sisson. Thank you for stepping up and talking some lions with me. And as for A.W. from the Mitten Sports Show, I hope you feel better soon. Uh, get, get well. Check him out. He is going to regularly be on Sunday nights, I believe, here on IE Sports Radio. Everybody stay healthy. Stay well. Enjoy the return of football. Thursday night, the NFL season starts. Fantasy football's back. All those good things. Man, it's fun to talk sports, isn't it? Thank you guys again so much. Have a good night.